Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sky Blue Fan TV. My name's Mark Smith. Uh, it's been another fairly quiet week in the history of Coventry City Football Club, but the good news is it's all, it's all for uh, positive reasons. Uh, new owner, obviously, it's been announced, uh, Doug King taking the reins at Coventry City. And tonight's podcast will be focusing on our away trip to Turf Moor, where we'll be visiting Burnley FC. Uh, tonight, I've uh, been joined by our regular guest, Miles Cadden. Uh, have Miles now. Evening, Miles. How are you doing? Good evening. I don't know what happened there to the intro. We had a bit of a technical problem, but uh, yeah, good evening, no, Mark. Be... Um, yeah, all that, good, mate. All good this me. end. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might be me there with the uh, intro, so I apologize for that. Uh, but tonight, we've been joined by uh, not one, not two, but we've got three Bernie guests. Um, so I want to just introduce the first one. We've got Mr. Mark Cologne. Now, a bit, a bit of background about Mark. I've, um, we were teammates at cricket. So um, I've known him for quite a while. He's a Burnley fan. I think he's been itching to come on to talk about Burnley. So um, I'll bring Mark on now. Evening, Mark. How are you doing? Evening. Yeah, good. Thank you. Very good. And uh, Mark, I think I'll start with uh, saying I've got evidence on my phone that you said uh, Burnley going to win 4-0 uh, on, on Saturday. So I thought I'd start with that straight away. Yeah, but I say a lot of things, but they don't always ring true. So uh, I will say that a lot of things I say don't always happen. So um, I'm, I'm quite, you can hold me to that by all means. It's absolutely fine. I'm interested, I'm interested to see if you're presenting as good as your opening batting. I think my... Mm, I think I think my presenting is better than my batting, but we'll see. You might you might have a different opinion after tonight's show, but we'll see. Um, and we've got Mark's brother tonight, so we've got Lee Colonna. I'm just going to now. Lee, good hey, evening. How are you doing? All right, yourself? Yeah, not bad. Just going for work. So I'm looking forward to um, talking football and um, having, having a good chat and a good pod. So, yeah, great to have you on, Lee. No and last but not least, we've got Dan from Turf Moorhouse TV. Dan, great to have you on again. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Living the dream. Living yeah, the dream yeah. on a Thursday night, why not? Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. And looking forward to uh, chatting all things Burnley Cov. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, um, let's talk a bit about Cov um, first, and we'll go. We'll move on to Burnley after. So, another quiet week, Miles. Uh, not much been going on. Obviously, there's um, some takeover. Apparently, some guy called Doug King's now running the club. <laughs> but um, in terms of the game, how much of an impact? Of a positive impact this could have down to the players that now we've got, you know, a new owner, uh, wipe the debts, things start seems like a bit more settled off the field. Do you think that might transpire to a positive performance on, on the pitch on Saturday? Well, from the uh, TV, yeah, so um, um, going on to today, from the pictures and videos I've seen of the uh, lads coming out for training. Um, by the looks on their faces, it looks it's had, like had an absolute mega effect on them. Uh, um, oh, you're just leaving uh, a little bit, Miles. Just, just, they just look. They just look. Oh, well, I think you're, you're, you might have to log off and log on because your sound's gone a little bit. Just look more. So, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I think, you're yeah, better now. Go on. I think, I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll just sort of chime in. I think it's, I think it can have a positive impact on, on the games uh, on yeah. Saturday. I think, I think. So, um, yes, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, we got, we, got you, we got you back. Sorry about that. Oh, it's come off. Um, yeah, I'll just say, I'll just say, I think it'll have a positive impact. A couple of new signings at the back. Um, we've got um, the new guy from Rotherham United, um, and a new, a new left back at Man City. So, a couple of new players is good. Um, still think we need to strengthen going forward. Um, you know, looking at what we've got going forward, we haven't got. We've got Matty Godden who's just come back from uh, injury. He's, he's been in training today, but he's unlikely to play for us uh, for the Burnley game. Obviously, as you know, Callum O'Hare is a is a long term injury. Injury, so that's 
that's a concern and, and we've moved on uh, Todd Kane. So it's it's a game where I feel I think Burnley are, you know, in my opinion, the team the team of the the team of the season from what I've seen. Um they look a side that look ready to get promoted back up to the Premier League and I think um let's start with you, Dan. I mean, do you feel you know, from what the game is with with Burnley, do you feel uh, do you feel excited by sort of Vincent Company, the style of football, obviously top of the league? I mean, there's not much you can be grumbled about, is there really? No, no. I think when you look at what the what the murmurs were when relegation hit, you know, the it was all about the numbers, about finance, uh, the players that the big players that you'll lose when you've had that consistent back line of me, Tarkowski Pope, that sort of even just that triangle was pivotal to half of the success we've had in the Premier League. So you lose them three, but then you lose McNeil, who at the time, McNeil and Corney were our only outset for goals, you know, finding pockets of space and things like that. Um, you know, losing Chris Wood throughout the season, okay, comfort blanket. I hope that offside flag still keeps him warm. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was all more the murmurs from the outside. You know, looking in, thinking, oh, back-to-back relegations, this ain't going to look good. And I think it's just typical Burnley. We've sort of just gone, you know what, sod you, sod what you're saying, and we'll get out of this somewhere, somehow. And uh, a bit like Vegos to Manchester United, I think we've fallen upwards this season. Yeah. For what? I mean, I, I went to the game, I went to the game at, at, at uh, the CBS Arena, and I thought Burnley were sort of side they played the what what, what struck me at Burnley's with under companies is the pressing game that you play. You play a really good pressing game, but you execute it really well. And I felt at at, at, at the CBS and I, I saw it at the first game of the season at Huddersfield where um Huddersfield couldn't even get out, out there in half for the ninety minutes. And I think that's 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 down to the players, I guess. And that is that is that kind of the pattern of sort of um games you've seen this season of Burnley where he likes to adopt a sort of high pressing kind of system. Dan, do you can hear me? Hello? Do you want me to jump in on that one, Mark? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I think I uh, might have lost him. Yeah, I think I think what you'll find is um, if you if you go back, there's a there's a video on YouTube of what company talked about when he came in with the players, um, and he said, "Bear with us, you know, it's going to take three, four, five months for us to get this right." Um, and I think every Burnley fan didn't expect the sort of level of success that, that we got at the start of the season, uh, right from the off. You know, the Huddersfield game was on on Sky. I think it surprised a lot of people with the the turnaround that we had, um, and ultimately sort of the, the target was by the time we got to the World Cup that we were in or around the playoffs. Um, and I think that was the, the real pointer of, of where they wanted it to be. Um, and ultimately, we've exceeded well above those, those expectations. Um, what, you'll, what you'll see uh, is, is a high-pressing game. Um, Brownhill will, will play in the, the 10 role. Um, and as soon as the ball goes out to the full-backs or potentially the centre-backs, uh, you'll find Brownhill joins both the wingers and the centre-forward, whoever that is who plays it plays on Saturday and they go for a full big press after about five or six seconds if if the the ball hasn't been won back then they'll move into what's what's called the low block uh, and retreat to the halfway line but you know anyone can can get it off uh, BBC Sport Uh, if you look at the goals that we scored against Bournemouth two of those were scored in that sort of fashion Uh, one where Barnes has robbed uh, the defender uh, and the other one where Brownhill sort of uh, nabbed the defender and what's what's been impressive is that not only the turnover of the ball, but then the first pass is always forward uh, yeah. in that instance. And, and and if you watch company on the sidelines, he's always encouraging that first pass not to go back, but to go forwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it is about that that quick win. Uh, teams have, have tried to suss us out in different ways, but on the whole, that tends to be the thing. And it's almost, we almost play like a 4-2-4 formation uh, with, that, with that big press. Uh, yeah. and, and then with the fans at the cricket field end, they're trying to suck the ball into the goal, um, you know, during the game. Sure. Uh, Lee, from what I understand, Bernie might have a couple of injury worries defensively for this game. Can you tell yeah, us we've got, we've got um, our big centre-back out. 
Um, he's done his ankle. He came off against Bournemouth and was seen with a with a boot on his ankle after the game. We're a bit concerned, and we were hoping it wasn't going to be as as serious as it was. So Howard Bellis is going to be oh, out yeah. sideline yeah. for a couple of months. Um, yeah. He has been our ever present player. He's been every single minute of every single game, and he has been superb. Um, so that is a concern. But we have got probably Charlie Taylor, who'll probably come back into that centre back role. Um, Vincent Company sees him more as centre back, um, yeah. which he has been impressive in that role. That's really our main injury concern. Um, is that is that centre back position? But we have got, which we didn't have last season. We've got quality players who can come in and fill that space. Whereas last yeah. season, if Tarkovsky and me were injured, it was a case yeah. of we're going to get opened up here. But I think every Burnley fan would agree is we have replacements for most positions. And whereas six months ago, we'd be thinking we're going to ship a lot of goals. It's now a case of we've got quality to to, to plug that gap. Sure. And who do you think will come in for Howard Bellis? Um, I, think, I think it will be Charlie Taylor, I think. Yeah. I don't know if Mark the, the Mark Dan will disagree, but I think Taylor's got that Premier League experience. He hasn't played as many minutes as I think he would want to, but I think he looks very comfortable in that role. I think when when we first saw him as a as a centre back, when Vincent Company put him there, we we may have been surprised as Burnley fans. We've not seen him in that position before, but he seemed to suit it. It seems like he's more comfortable in that in that back line rather than moving that ball forward and just mopping bits and pieces up. So I hope he will come in. And play that that role quite comfortably, um, and organise the defence exactly like Howard Bellis does. Sure, yeah. Um, got a couple of questions here from our um, our audience, our esteemed audience. Um, so let's go to um, the official Flame Esports team. He's, he's wanted to ask, um, let's say, Mark. Be interested to, to know what what you, the Clarets fans thinks their weaknesses are. Do you, what weaknesses do you think Coventry could exploit? Howard Bellis, maybe. I, I think there is, there's always going to be the question over the, the centre-back. You know, as Lee said, Harvard Bellis and, and Jordan Bayer have, have been our, our two at the back. Uh, Taylor did start at the start of the season, um, but has found himself on the bench and he's, he's come in for, uh, in for Matson and uh, uh, occasionally on the left-hand side. Um, but ultimately, I think the, the, the key weakness and, and probably the question mark is, is around uh, the physicality. Uh, you know, against Blackpool and also against Luton, uh, we did struggle. Uh, and obviously, it's well documented about the Sheffield United game. I do think mm-hmm. that was a blip. Um, so there's always going to be a question mark about physicality. Um, but I don't think you can question, really, 11 wins in 12 games. Uh, we've just no. been a Premier League side away from home. Uh, as a Burnley fan, you've got to be as confident as you ever can. But there is the 2001-2002 season that sits in the back of my mind when we were top of the league at Christmas. Oh. And we got absolutely spanked by Man City. Uh, and unfortunately for myself and Lee, uh, we lost out to the playoffs by one goal uh, to Norwich City. And when you're a teenager growing up in Norwich as a Burnley fan, that's not always going to go down particularly well. So there is there is that concern that, you know, second half of the season... Was that um, the season you know, where Gascoigne had a free kick in a day in minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Could, yeah. Against, against Coventry. Uh, against Coventry. Yeah. Coventry. Uh, we won 1-0, we won yes, didn't we, I think. It was Hedman, I think, who made the save, but um, yeah. not that it's burned burned into my memory. Um, so <laughs> it's going really well. Um, we do keep the ball. You know, possession is is really key. Um, there is a, con- a question mark about uh, how long will uh, Cullen and Court continue? You know, if one of those gets injured, I think they're they're probably our most important two players. I think we've got people who can come in elsewhere, uh, but when Cork and Cullen potentially get injured or suspended sort of disjoints the team. So, so there is a question mark there, but but on the whole, I'd say it's it's physicality uh, and whether we can continue that momentum. We're going to lose a game at some point. You know, it's going to happen. It's going to be a difficult game. So, you know, let's just hope we can continue. And I'm, I'm almost like counting down to 85 points. I think once we get to 85 points, we'll be fine. So 29 or so to go uh, in 20 games, you'd like to pip us as, as one of the favourites to go up. But until we're there, Hmm. I'm not. I'm not confident. I'm not saying anything about getting promoted and, and things like that. Sure. Uh, got a question here, Dan, um, from Luke Robinson. Evening, Luke. In reverse fixture, we gave Burnley a very competitive game. I expect some something similar this weekend. Yeah, I think it touches a little bit on what Mark said. You know, the weaknesses have sort of been probably something that we at this moment, from a Burnley fan perspective, that you don't sort of see the 
weaknesses. It's the opposition that see that when they're watching the play. we almost like controlling a game and got sort of in that headspace of that. Um, although you t- look at the Sheffield United game where if, if you want to say weaknesses, then set pieces is probably up there because mm-hmm. um, that's where they hit us the hardest. Um, I think it will be another tough fixture. I think Coventry are a team that are so underestimated this season. As as we saw, you know, lang- languishing a little bit at the start, found that bit of form. Even, to be honest, for all the, the talk on the outside with everything going on at Coventry, you'd have thought that would have hurt you more. If anything, it's give you the catalyst to push on. And it. I think we're going to be looking at a lot better of a Coventry team than we already faced, which worries me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think to answer that point, I think the thing about our team is the team spirit is always is always there. It's always a fantastic team spirit under Mark Robbins, and it, it's it's been instilled it's been instilled that sort of team spirit for you know last season, this season. It's pretty much the same group of players with a couple of changes. Um, I think it's a it, obviously it's a, it's a tough game, but I think I think the, the team spirit is brilliant. Um, I think looking ahead to this game, yes, it's, it's, it's on paper it's going to be our hardest game of the season. I think Burnley um, are, are a side that, in my opinion, we're playing a Premier League side, no doubt about it. So, but I mean, history tells us that with, with the teams we play, promoted wise, we, we we can get results. We, we we got two wins against Fulham last season. Um, we got a point at Bournemouth. Um, so I think it gives us a little bit of hope for optimism. Um, and we need we need we need a better performance than Wrexham because Wrexham was was a very very disappointing result. Um, bear in mind, okay, it wasn't probably it wasn't wouldn't be our first choice eleven to start, but it's still a side you'd say we should be getting we should be beating Wrexham, you know, no no question. But I think from our point of view, um, certainly from my point of view, if you get a point at Burnley, I'll be absolutely delighted with that uh, because no one has got anything at Burnley this season. So um, I'm. I'm not exactly um, confident about this game. I think it's a game I feel we're gonna we're gonna lose, but you never know. I've, I've said we lose before, and we haven't. So it, it's. I think I think that the events of off the field. I'm hoping will will go down and fills it down to the players and give us, um, you know, that bit more belief, that bit more confidence because Burnley are a very tough opponent. They're, they're a quality side. Um, and they're going to be a tough nut to crack. No, no doubt about it. I think I think there will be a prim- there will be a Premier League side in the season. There's no doubt about that. So, we've got to give it our best shot, really. Um, go, it's going to get a question a few miles from Glenn. Evening, Glenn. Hope you're well. Um, miles, what's your thoughts on Eccles' new deal? Obviously, signed a new contract today until 2027. Uh, Todd Kane now leaving on loan. He's gone to Charlton and, and, and Godden back back on the training field, and and also Tyler Walker back training. Um, Generally, pretty positive, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I, I hope it's all working now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Eccles, right. I think, is fantastic. Um, he's a great young prospect, as we've seen when he's playing at the right back. He's, um, you know, he, he, he's really slotted in nicely and he can slot into the middle. It's a shame he's got injured um, because he is the future for us and he is one of our own. Um, as as for Todd Kane, it's probably best for him. You know, I I, th- I thought he did really well against Wrexham, and when he come on um, the game before as well, he, he's he started to look in his normal self. But obviously, Robin's now bringing in the two wing. Fourth minute equaliser down there, so that, that was special. But um, as for Godden, fantastic! Can't wait for him to come back. But Walker, um, I have somewhere else because you know my feelings on Walker. Um, I don't think he's even he'd even get in a in a the Rex team. To be honest with you, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I mean, I, his not, head's not a massive walk in there. Not in. Um, in I've the lost, lost miles. It. I, I, it hasn't joined us. Yeah. Um, question here from 
Scarborough Sands. You think there'll be new faces will be signed before Saturday? Um, it's difficult to tell, really. I think um, I, I still feel we we are light going forward. Um, I would like I'd like to see a replacement really for O'Hare because O'Hare's out for the season. Um, it's a shame he wasn't fit for Burnley because it would be nice to have stuck a couple past them. Sorry, guys. But, uh, um, <laughs> He's coming Burnley um, next season, though, isn't he? When we're in the Prem. Oh, no. No way, man. It's first no, signing, isn't no. it? BK's no. first signing. <laughs> no, he, he know, he knows About four million, straight. isn't it? About four and a half million, I think. No, mate. No, mate. He, 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 he's with us. He's our player. He loves, he loves the club too much. I'm telling you now. But um, no, in all set, but going back a bit seriously, I think we need we need a couple of uh, new faces in answer to the question. I think Jamie Patterson is, is one player we're room with, with and uh, he would be a good addition if, if we could get that one off out of the line. But um, there's there's a lot of things, I think, from our point of view. It, 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 what we need to prioritise, in my opinion, is is not sell any players, not sell Victor Jokeres, not sell Gus Hamer. Uh, obviously, O'Hare's not going to go anywhere with his injury. So um, if we can keep them... You know, worst case scenario till the end of the season. I think that's a good. That would be good. Um, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things to be positive about. Um, I'm, you know, I'm excited to see Brooke, Brooke Norton Cuffey, uh, Josh Wilson, Ed Esbrand. There's a couple of barrel names there. Uh, they might be featuring for us um, in this game. So two two young fullbacks, um, one on loan from Arsenal, and uh, Josh Wilson Esbrand um, coming in on loan from Manchester City. Um, in terms of our, our team news, we've got one suspension. Jonathan Panzo, who's been very much a regular for us this season, is um, suspended, I believe, this game because he got sent off against Wrexham. So, I don't think he will feature. Um, I think, looking at our team, I think he'll probably go... Um, probably go Jokeres up front on his own with Casey Palmer playing the 10 role. Um, and I think, defensively... I wouldn't be surprised to see Jake Bidwell probably going to the back three with Rose um, and Callum Doyle. Um, and I think they're the two, two debutants who will probably start, I'd imagine. Um, I think Sheaf and Sheaf and Hamer will feature in the centre midfield. Um, and I think Ben Wilson will return in goal in place of uh, Simon Moore, who he didn't, have, didn't have one of his better games against Wrexham. Uh, let me just find some more questions here. Um well, not questions, but a comment here from Victoria Oaks. Evening, Vicky. I hope you're well. Uh, I think we have to go in the belief, like we did against Fulham last season, we can give anyone a game if we are at it, and hopefully, positive developments will help. Yeah, I think it's a game. I think I think the start of the week. I mean, after losing to Rex, and you think you've got Rex, um, Burnley next game, I'm kind of fearing the worst because I'm fe- thinking four or five nil. I think I think I don't necessarily think it'll be four or five nil, but. I think we can go to the game with a bit more confidence. Um, I think what we've got to try and do is, is uh, keep it to nil-nil as much as we can. If we can get to half-time at nil-nil and just frustrate the crowd, quieten the crowd a bit, I think that would be good. Um, and then you never know. I mean, we, it's strange things happen in football. Um, it's it's a funny old game. And, you know, I, I said we would lose to, to Cardiff quite easily when we were in a bad run and we won. So, you know, football's, football's a strange game. Um who, who Perfect time to play us, though, Mark. Perfect time to play us after that. After the result against Wrexham, it's sort of like, right, lace up your boots, pick pick up where, you know, sort of that, that wasn't acceptable. You know, you, they, they're the sort of games we should be putting to bed. This is where you could really hurt us on the back of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think Robbins is going to, you know, be having had would have had words with the players um, probably on the Sunday uh, because you know from the from the neutral it was it was an exciting game but as a Coventry City fan it was it was desperately disappointing because you know that was an opportunity for players to really step step up and say look you know I if, if I get if there's injuries to you know ha, you know obviously a Callum O'Hare or a Hamer or a Yokeres I'm going to be that man to take the opportunity and and, and um, prove my worth and not, not enough players did that. Um, I felt the second half, though, we did play very well. I think once we made the changes, uh, particularly with, with Gustavo Kamer came on, we, looked, we, looked, we did look more the championship side and Wrexham did look the National League side. And um, for, unfortunately, it wasn't for the fact that you know, we missed so many you know, fairly easy chances, we, we would have won that game. Uh, even though we were 4-1 down, we, you could see Wrexham was struggling for fitness-wise. And um, you know, I felt it was a... 
a kind of a missed opportunity. But then I look at it on the other point of view, we haven't got a big squad. So it had, we, probably a, re, a, a draw wouldn't necessarily have been a good result for us um, from a playing perspective. But obviously financially, it would have been a good result to the one because that gets us more money in the pot. Um, a good cut run is always is always welcome. And, you know, it's always good to pick your wits against the Premier League side. But it wasn't to be, you know, we, we have to move on. Um, so let me just find another question. Um, not a question. Luke Robinson, uh, Casey Palmer's really stepped up and he'll cause burning some problems. Well, let's hope so. I think Casey Palmer, for me, um, I think he's been very good going forward. Um, and I, I'm fingers crossed that uh, he had another good game. Um, well, so didn't he have time at Blackburn as well, Casey Palmer? So he'll have a bit of an extra motive to maybe try and put a result in against us as well. Oh, well, well, the boys will let them let him know that, won't they? It's like oh, Rob Hanley picky at, man, uh, for Norwich, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, question here, Lee, from uh, official Flamey Sports team. What's the story regarding Scott Twine? Is he still injured? There's been a lot of things on Twitter about, is he injured? Is it his headspace? Is he as good as we thought he was? I mean, he's only played a handful of minutes. Um, in the handful of minutes I've seen him play, he's been all right. Um, but he came on in the week, I can't remember who it was against, came on and they went off for about five minutes and Vincent Company said it was, it was a tactical decision rather than an injury. <sighs> I don't really know. I mean, we haven't seen enough of him play. I'm sure that that's a degree. I've not seen enough of him play 45, 50, 60 minutes to get an impression of how he's going to play. Is he going to fit? I thought he'd feature more against Bournemouth. I thought that'd be a great opportunity. Ashley Barnes played really well against Bournemouth. You were saying that some of your players didn't take the opportunity, whereas I think Ashley Barnes has maybe played himself to start on Saturday. I think he played extremely well. He was like a very, very good player. There were rumours he was going to leave as well. He's going to go to Huddersfield, like Lowson went to Huddersfield. But he played extremely well. So I don't know, I don't know where Twine fits. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how he's going to get in this team. Like Mark said before, we've won so many games in a row. We are going to lose a game somewhere. Is he only going to get in if someone's injured? And I don't know where he can fit at the moment. It's a, it's a horrible situation for him and a great situation for Burnley that... Do we need him right now? No. And that brings me back to my point earlier on, is we've got so many good replacements on the bench now. Whereas last season, we were literally, you'd look at the names of the bench and think, Dale Stevens, Christ alive. He's, he's <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and, try and, and try and change a game of football. And you're thinking, what the bloody hell's going to go on here? You're not, you're not going to get anything. Whereas now, I mean, having Swine on the bench, I think we're all pretty pleased that he can't get in the team with someone who's got that much quality, he's scored so many goals and assists last season. I don't think he's injured. I just don't think he's needed. You can always, yeah. You can, we, we, need, we might need a couple of strikers. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, what a horrible position to be in. Scott Twine yeah. isn't needing our starting 11. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Miles, you're back again. Hope, hope, hopefully you can hear us nice and clear. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on my phone now, so hopefully it should be okay. I, I need a new laptop. <laughs> no, we'll get, we'll get that sorted. Don't worry about that. Um, so, worst thing, I mean, even the worst thing we can do is sit back. Burnley will rip us to bits. We need to attack. Do you think that's, that's the tactics that Robin will be turning his players on Saturday? Well, do, do, do you know, I, I think that we'll probably set up the same as we did against Watford. Um, and we'll allow, we'll allow the wing backs to come on to us. And then we'll probably nick the ball and try and catch Burnley on the break. Um, and it worked really well at Watford. You know, we, we, we let them put on a little bit of pressure and uh, we sort of soaked it up and they were crossing balls in and it wasn't going anywhere because we were putting enough pressure on the, the, their wing-backs and the wingers to um, stop them from getting a good crossing. So maybe we'll set up that way. I, I think what I'm going to be impressed with, with is if we do start them two new signings and um, I think that we probably will because of the pace and power that, I've, that we've seen so far off those guys. And I think... Um, not um, Brooks played against Burnley already this season and he caused them a little bit of problems and he uh, set up a, a goal for Rotherham, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, down, down up at Burnley. So um, it could be an interesting sort of setup, really. I think Robbins, in his mind, will probably, because of everything that's gone on this week, will probably go for it. We've got nothing to lose, it's a free hit. Burn, Burnley have won the league. Um, whatever, whatever anyone fan says, I think they've won the league. It's a bit like Fulham's situation where 
you know, we went down there and they had to beat us to clinch the title and we turned them over. So, you know, we, we never know. It could be it could be another Fulham away and uh, we, we're just going to go and take it, take it to them. And as I say, it's a free hit for us. And if we win it, you know, happy days. If we get a point, happy days. If we lose... It, it don't really matter, does it? To be honest with you, we're never going to catch them. So it's it's neither there or, or anywhere, really, is it? To be honest with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I think I think we need to. Um, I don't think I don't think sitting back is the right approach for this game uh, because I feel Burnley got so much quality that they can hurt you quite easily. So and they have got that ability to open up quite easily. So I'm quite excited to see our new wing backs. Um, you know, to see how they get on. Um, it's, it's a bit of a baptism of fire playing against you know the, the top side in the league. No doubt about it. It's going to be a, a tough game, but I think it's 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 about you know making the right decisions with passing and that. And yeah, I like to see us have a, I like to see us go and have a go really because if we end up losing four or five nil and we've had a go, I don't think anyone can moan as much. Whereas if we're just sitting back and not really offering anything and we lose mm-hmm. two, a couple of goals, it's it's not you know to me you've, you've just got to give it a go and you never know. I mean football's a strange game. You know, any team can have an off day. If, if you're not quite on it, you can lose. And, and hopefully that will be the case from our point of view. Um, I want to bring back in um, Dan. So, comment here from Sky, we saying about our midfield three of Hamer, Allen, Sheaf need to dominate Cullen, Cork and Brown if possible. Do you feel that's a key battle ahead of this game? Yeah, there's been a bit of a shift at Burnley. We've always been resilient at the back. Now we're very, very much... Like probably the pivotal area for us is that midfield area um, where we sort of have to have three ball-playing midfielders, really. Um, you know, we're trying to be very quick in our approach going forward, even be patient in that build-up. Um, so what, you, what your lads don't want to be doing is just chasing the ball. You want to be stopping us from doing that and spraying it around and trying to find little pockets Never thought I'd see Burnley utilising space in like just through a dash year. I never thought I'd see Burnley even know what space was. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it, it'll be a tasty midfield battle. Like I say, it were only narrow result at your place, weren't it? Uh, you know, and even then, the goal was what it, it p rolled into back. It seemed to take an eternity to drop in. Um, yeah. So I'm expecting, a, like I say, a strong, a stronger game in terms of the midfield, though. Uh, that that is going to be where this game's won or lost. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think for me, the other our, our, our biggest problem is no Carl McFadden. And I think he for us has been a massive miss at the back, and I feel where we're a little bit weaker. I feel is at the back. Um, we don't have. I, I mean, I think I think Bidwell is an okay filling centre back, but you need your best players to be playing Burnley and McFad- McFadden for me is probably our best defender and he won't, he's, he's, he's not available to us and I think I think that's where you could probably exploit us and that, that's an area for me I'm I'm really really concerned about um, you know so that's that's why I don't feel massively confident about this game um, I've got a different question though um, from Luke Robinson again um, about the loudest fans Who's which away fans have been the loudest so far at, at Turf Moor it will be us, of course, but uh, but before us, who, who else? Which other fans have been pretty loud? I've not been it. yet. I can't say anything. Yeah, I'm, it's too far. It's too far away. Yeah. Yeah. Too so far away. Have to have Probably a question you. No, no, Norwich, Norwich away is going to be a good one for you, lads. Anyway, oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> got, my, got my tickets yesterday. Four miles down the road. Oh, happy days, happy days. Don't even have to worry about hotels. You sort of. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly, I would probably go for. Well, obviously, Blackburn was quite loud, as you, as to be expect as to be expected. But with it being a derby, you try and drown them out, which I think we did comfortably, especially in terms of the football. Anyway, uh, other than them. I think I think I think it will be the loudest. So don't worry about that. That's, that's, that's yeah. We haven't, we haven't yeah. given teams a lot to cheer about, have we? Let's no, I mean, no. no. Rotherham, that's the Rotherham, that Rotherham, Rotherham, that's Rotherham, the team I was thinking because you know Rotherham and Blackpool. You know Blackpool yeah. came here. You know the, the fact that 
we were absolutely all over them, and they managed to turn the gate a three-one into a three-three. Um, absolute Still sickness. Not sure how we did that? No, no, Te- teething issues, little teething yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, Rotherham came with a voice as well, uh, but we surely silenced them in the dying minutes. Uh, but yeah, it, it's weird. You usually think it'd be like your Sheffield United. I know we've not played them yet, but you'd, you'd probably say the bigger teams that you come up against will take a good following. But it's been the the ones that you you don't expect, and uh, it, it, it's good. It, it's good when it's the. Uh, I, I sound a bit disrespectful when I'm saying them like <laughs> minor teams or something like that. I feel like I'm like back on your perch, peasant. Um, but, yeah, yeah. but no, it's 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 not like that. I think. You know, every fan base has got a devoted set of fans. And away from home, you know, every team's going to come with a voice. And just looking at the January transfer window, uh, Mark, what areas do you feel, if any, do Burnley to strengthen? Well, I think we, we started, didn't we, talking about at centre-back with uh, Harwood Bellis being out. Um, it could be one that we need to, to look at. Uh, you know, you'd like to think Taylor can come in and we've got uh, young McNally who can, who can probably slot in there and he did well against Bournemouth. Uh, there is a, a thing around uh, a centre forward. So as Lee mentioned, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Sorry, I mean uh, Ashley Barnes. I uh, wasn't sure on the on the performance on Saturday. He's uh, there was rumours he was off on loan or you know to Huddersfield with with Matty Loughton. Um But we've been linked to a couple. So um, Oberfamey from from Swansea. Uh, he seems to have upset uh, a lot of the fans uh, at Swansea with his attitude, and it well, that's appears that he'll be today as well. I think. Yeah, but so I've, I've been watching uh, and reading Twitter, and apparently, as per the uh, the Burnley standard, we've we've offered a Mars bar, and then we added a Twix. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think we'd have to pay a bit of money. Sort of nine or ten million was mentioned. There is a centre forward who's quite good at Coventry, who would suit our style as well. And after after they turned us away for a, a mediocre centre midfielder, we think we'd go think back so. for their slightly better striker. So there has been that link, but but if he's going to go. I think it would be a, probably a Premier League team, someone like an Everton or someone like that. But it sounds like you probably won't sell because of, of new owners. Um, I was going to say, is Gary McSheffrey still playing? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then there's also been the link to um, Sam Surridge at Nottingham Forest. But what I saw of him playing recently, nah, I'm not sure what fits him. So um, we would not have him. And then the, the, the mad thing is, is that we've got a centre forward that's ours who's potentially going to go and start playing in front of 72,000 fans at Man United. So, I mean, how that's turned around. So, you know, Jay Rod and, and, and Barnes are both in what I would say is the twilight of their careers. Um, I think they're being asked to play a very different way to they did uh, under Dice, which is no surprise. They're almost playing sort of a false nine. Um, so I, I'd, I'd expect a striker to arrive. Um, again, Backing up what Dan's saying, I don't want to sound too arrogant and cocky, but isn't it better we wait until the summer and see where we're at um, and then go from there? But goals come from all around the team. Um, and as I've intimated, that that midfield pairing of Cullen and Cork, I'm sure if there was someone else who we could get who was of similar standards, uh, we'd look to snap them up. But um, we certainly aren't going to buy a winger uh, or, or, uh, or any fullbacks. I think, really, if we could make some permanent deals out of someone like... Uh, uh, Matson or, or Teller or something like that, that would be a good window for us. Um, but one thing to be really clear about is we haven't received our parachute payments just yet. Um, you know, the sales have come uh, and the buys have come from selling people like Pope and, and, and Corne. So I know a lot of fans, it does feel a bit annoying. I, I felt like that were in the Premier League. Uh, we've got an embarrassment of riches at this level. Uh, I feel like we've earned that, you know, when we got promoted under Dyson in the first time round. So it is, it's almost a little bit embarrassing. We, we could go and buy someone. Do we need anyone? Probably a centre-forward. Yeah. And uh, Miles, I mean, do you think it's a possibility that we could add, add a couple more players to, you know, to, our, to our team, you know, so close to, game, uh, to this game? Or just January as a whole, I mean, do you feel that we're going to add a couple more players, um, you know, in our, in our team? Yeah, I think I think Robbins is going to be quite ruthless, especially after last week. I mean, he said in his interview that you know there was players knocking on his door asking why they can't play, why they're not playing, and he it it can just turn around to them now and say that's why. And you know, you you on your way. I, I I could probably see three more players coming in, probably one more loan, um, which that would take us to our five, and then um, I'd probably think that we'll get two players not. 
how can I say, not through purchasing them at a, a real high price. I think we'll go for players that are coming to the end of their contracts at their, at their parent clubs, uh, like we did with Bidwell last season. Um, you know, we got Bidwell in the January. His contract was coming to the end in the summer and we ended up getting him on a, I think it was a free, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think that that's what Robbins will look at and um, just try and bolster the team because obviously, I, I said it earlier and I've, I've said it in, in weeks gone by, we've got a 21-man squad. Everyone else has got a 31-man squad and that's that's what we're fighting against and you know, I was on the uh, pod earlier, Burnley pod earlier, and you know, you've got they've got the royalty of of being able to rest mats in one game, bring in a, another player the next game, then rest mats and again, then bring in someone else and rest them, bring them in. With us, it's like you're constantly playing the same players week in, week out, two games a week, and that that's what Robbins has been up against and. You know, we, we were talking about transfers and what January is going to be and and and. August or July and August is going to be like for us this is a rarity that we've signed two players this week and everyone thinks you know oh well you know we're not so hard done by seriously we've signed two players this week in January I don't think we've signed two players in January for probably four or five years Robbins has never had the money and to get to get two loans in like we've done already it just shows what he's trying to do this window and I, th- I believe we'll get probably three more I reckon yeah, I, I think he, what he wants to do is, is, is to add pace down the flanks. I think, you know, I don't know what you think, Miles, but the last couple of games, I feel with, we haven't, you know, I feel Dabo's fitness has been a bit questionable. Yeah. Fact, I think, I agree with what you said earlier about Kane. I think Kane has been, has played couple, quite well, but the only thing I would say against that, to mitigate that, is the fact that Kane came on against Cardiff, against the team who parked the bus for 90 minutes, and he didn't have to defend that game. And then again, he came on against Wrexham in a losing in a in a losing situation, and Wrexham were, were, were just really just happy to sit back, bearing in mind they were they were in the lead. So yeah, I, I feel that these two signs. I mean, I, I've got to be honest, I've not seen a lot of a lot of these the two new kids who, who, who hope will be featuring for us. But you have got to trust the manager's judgment. I think um, they they're both young, they're both hungry, they got you know it'd be great experience, but they've got a point to prove. And um, I'm hoping they can do the job. I mean, you know, I think we desperately need pace. I think if we are if we are going to try and go to a Burnley, we, we can hit them on the counter. We can, you've got to hit them with pace. And that, yeah. that, that, for me, is where we can hurt Burnley, potentially, uh, with, with Jokeres, because I don't feel like we, we always get, Jokeres always gets that support. And, um, you know, that's, I think, to be fair, I think Bidwell's done a good job, but I don't think he's, he's not a wing-back. That's not his position. No. I think, I think, I think for me, he, he he starts on Saturday as part of the back three, obviously with no Panzo. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I think I, I feel like I feel slightly more optimistic. I think at the start of the week, I was like pretty much doom and gloom. I was thinking, I really don't want to play Burnley. I'm fearing four or five nil, and it could still be four or five nil. But I feel a little bit more optimistic. I feel like you know we might even get a cheeky little draw. You know, I don't know about you, Miles, but you know that's 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 my view. Well, but you know. For me, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing off your hymn sheet there, Matt. I, I got in the car Monday morning and driving to work. And Will was in the car with me and I turned around to him and said, I'm really not looking forward to Saturday. I'm really not looking no. forward to Saturday. And then Tuesday Tuesday afternoon when all the, all the rumours were going around about jo- Josh coming from Man City, you can already see the chemistry there between uh, him and Doyle when he, Doyle interviewed him. You know they're they're going to really work well together. You can see that straight away, um, and that that's what you need. And then when the announcement come with Doug, and then Tim Fisher going, um, it, it was all my birthday presents, Christmas presents, and everything all come at once on Tuesday. So, you know, it, it, it certainly changed the, the attitude of the fans. You've only got to see on social media how excited they are. And as I was saying, I tried to say earlier. Pictures and videos of the players today, it really looks like they're a lot happier with everything that's gone on because they, they were all smiles, they were bouncing. It, it, they just look completely different coming out of the changing rooms to go on the training pitch today. They, they looked a buoyancy about them. And then, um, and as the boys, I've, I've heard the boys say, you know, they've got to lose sometime. Um, you can't keep going on winning every single game. Um, you know, you, you, you don't win every single game. So, is it this weekend? I don't know. 
um, we'll go there and we'll give it a good go. And um, if we get three points, happy days. I'll take a draw now, all day long. But as I say, it's a free hit. Um, we've got to go there. And if we get the result, we get the result. You, you just don't know, do you? And if we don't get the result, it don't matter. On to the next one. You know, no. and Norwich, Norwich next week, Saturday, 12.30 kickoff on Sky. So, you know, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I think it's about performance in the day. I think we need a better performance than Wrexham. There's no question about that. I think Wrexham was, particularly first half, was was disgusting. You know, the first 60 odd minutes was one of the worst 60 odd minutes I've seen as a fan. And I was, I was, you know, very, very disappointed with the performance. But the next 30 odd minutes were, were, were much better. And hopefully, I hope we can give a good account of ourselves against Burnley. But I think as long as the players, as long as they give a good account of themselves and they don't get heavily beaten, um, you know, that's all you want is 100%. And to be fair to the players, they always do give 100%. And I will say, I'll, I'll always say that. Um, and if we can go to Burnley and, you know, football's a funny game, you just never know. You've just, you've just got to give it a go. I, I don't want to see a go to Burnley and be timid and, and let them just dom- and let them just sit back and let them just pass it, 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 their way through us, as Dan was saying earlier, because, you know, that plays into Burnley's hands. I think we've got to, we've got to try and go a bit toe-to-toe with them and play with a bit of a no-fear attitude and, and get in their faces. Like, they're getting our faces. Why can't we not do that to them? Mm. Um, and, you know, hopefully... And try and make the game ugly as well. Just just sometimes, you know, slow the game down and, and don't that, don't let them get into that passing rhythm, you know, and, and things like that. If we can do that, then you never know. We could, we could nick, nick a win. But that's just me being very optimistic. I, 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 I don't have much confidence in this game. The, th- um, the thing is, you said there about slowing the game down. We don't do that. We, no, don't, we don't. We don't play the dirty game, and no. and and that's a bugbear for me. I, I I still believe that we need to start bringing that into our play, um, because we do like to play football, like Burnley like to play football. But there's teams that come to us and they just time waste, fall on the ball, and roll around, and you know go down with cramp just to slow it down. And it's like, come on, just get on with the game because we're so used to it. But I believe now we, we've got to start looking at it because teams just keep doing it to us and it starts really, really just gets on your nerves. I don't know what the Burnley lads think. Who's been the worst? Who's been the worst for you guys this season? Time wasting. We did That's an easy one, isn't it? From... That's yeah. Rotherham. 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 Particularly bad. Yeah, and, they, and, it, and it showed up at the end. We beat them. So, yeah. yeah. Even though it were last minute, that like proper last minute, I'll just because the only thing were I remember, sort of I was coming down the stairs of the uh, cricket field stand, um, and this what four minutes added on something like that. Uh, we've managed to get one back, so it's two two. I'm thinking right, whistle's going to go any moment. Half of the two rows at the side of me had already managed to get out through the concourse and down, so I'm still in the stand. Next minute, I just. The goal at the back. Were it Dervis Oglu with a winner, I think. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, I just remember running to the side, gripping all of this Rotherham fan. He must have been what in his seventies or something like that. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, in his in his face, and he he, he just sort of went, yeah, and didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, sorry, sorry. I said emotions to get that, but he said, no, no, no. On the basis of the game, you deserved it. He said. Uh, our keeper, time wasted like no tomorrow. Oh, it's so annoying watching that on TV. Yeah. Do, you, do you, Miles, do you think, you know, when you're saying about playing ugly football, do you think that's because with your rise from, from League One, you've, you've almost done what we've had to do. You're playing good football. And actually, when you go into the Championship, you're playing good football again and it's, it's getting results, but not every week. And actually, it's hard to flick between the two. Mm. Um, and I think, I wonder whether that sort of, the outcome of, of playing under Robbins and sort of developing that style in League One before coming into the Championship. Yeah, well, we, 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 had, we had this style in League Two as well and everyone thought, oh, it's not the way to get out of League Two. And, you know, we were going to some pitches where it was really, really bad, but we managed to do it. And um, I, I, I get what you're saying. I think I think you could be right. You know, it's, it's our style of play is just go, just keep going, just keep playing. And, you know, try and grind teams down. If they want to start playing silly buggers, then then please do. I mean, like you've just said there, Dan, about, you know, you scored in, what was it, 93rd minute, was it, or something. I mean, we got we got over 21 points last season from stoppage time goals from teams playing silly buggers, you know. And, and, and managers were staying, opposition managers at the end of the games were saying, well, where's that time come from? It said four minutes, but you've played eight minutes. And it, it's, it's, it's not... 
an exact time, is it? It's, it is, you know, minimum of four minutes. If you start rolling around and start being daft and everything else, the referee will add that time on. And we were, I think we were the best in, in all, all the divisions last season of coming from behind and getting so many points. And, and you know, that kept us up and, and got us into our position we were. But, yeah, I think you could be right. It's our style of play like you guys. And it's... Um, you don't play that way, do you? You play to win. You play to play fancy football. And um, but I just wish, I just wish we could do it, like you're saying about the goalkeeper diving on the ball with about five minutes to go. If the ball comes in, every keeper grabs it, falls on the floor. We don't. We grab it, and Wilson just stands there with it. He doesn't do it. He doesn't go down. And when you see other teams, when the ball comes in, they grab it and they fall on the floor and just lie on it for a couple of seconds. That's the sort of thing I'm on about. Or throwing, take you a bit longer at a throwing, not rolling around on the floor and, and being daft. I don't, I don't want to see that. But, you know, just the lights of slowing the throwings down and free kicks down. And as I say, the goalkeeper, that's, that's what I'd like to see. But I don't know. It's, it's going to be good at the weekend. You play football, we play football. The ball's going to be on the ground. If it's windy, it don't matter because the ball's going to be on the floor, isn't it? Trust me, it's very windy. Very, <laughs> yeah, very windy. Yeah. Very windy. Yeah. Just hope it ain't waterlogged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've had to your point, though, Miles, about the sort of time waste, I guess, is, as you saw from the World Cup recently, that, you know, I reckon for next season that the officials will, will, will kind of stamp, clamp down on that. And you'll yeah. see maybe the added on time being, what, nine, ten minutes, maybe? I wouldn't surprise I, I think do that. That should happen. I think that's yeah. so important. And you look at how long the ball's in play in the Premier League 45 minutes out of 90. Yeah. It's just, it should be a case if you're going to roll around on the floor and get cramped for three minutes, that should be added on. I don't yeah. see why there shouldn't be something that's added on at the end. It really is. It was refreshing to see that in the World Cup, to be honest. Well, I think I think the FA Cup last week, I was watching the ref at some some points when, when the play stopped and he stopped his watch. And I think it was seven minutes in the first half. And was it seven minutes in the second half? I think it, yeah, was. it was. And... Um, so, in the FA Cup, probably the FA have told them, we've got to do it like they did in the World Cup. Because they can. It's, it's a different competition. So, yeah. for me, I think he did. He, I, I was looking at him and he, he was pressing his watch on his, on his wrist and he was stopping the time. And so, maybe it will come in next season because, I'm like you guys, I'm with you. You know, as you say, 45 minutes, the ball's in play out of 90 minutes. It's just ridiculous, man. You know, just you, you, and the only way to stop it is by adding on that, is by bringing in that rule of adding the time on, and that will stop the players from rolling around on the floor. You'll you you'll see with us if we go down for a free kick, unless it's really really bad, our players get straight back up mm-hmm. every every time. They don't roll around on the floor. They don't they don't hold their head when they've got kicked on their ankle and pretend they've got a head injury. You know, you see team players going down with kick on the ankle. They go down, hold the head, because they know the referee, if he's holding his head, he's got to stop the play. You know, and, and the only way to stop it is by bringing in that rule, rule where, the, where the referees are stopping the clock and, and really adding on the time. And we could, we could be there for two or three hours if, if these players keep doing it, couldn't we? Well, how many times have we seen in the Premier League these players are like David Luiz or whatever that's gone down and they're right near the away fans. Dan, and I knew you were going to say David Luiz. And they just yeah. sort of down like that. And the next one's like, like... And he's like... It's, you just, you know, it's like you said. A bit of, you know, um, shit house, dare I say. You know what I mean? Like, that's, shit, yeah. that's what you need. Yeah, maybe that, that's the correct term. I decided to go <laughs> down the old footballing terminology. But, uh, but yeah, that, I think that's what sometimes... It, parts of it need to be nipped out. But then within clubs, like you said, Miles, you wish that Coventry had a little bit of an element of that in terms of their gameplay. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, just slowing it down at throw-ins, corners, free kicks, you know, when when if you're winning one nil or, or whatever it is, or two one, just to slow it down. Not not roll around and be idiots, because we don't do that. We get up, we get on with it. And you you guys are probably the same. And you know, we we and we do. Mark Mark back me up on this one. The, the players just get up and get on with it. Hay, Hay was ace at doing it. He gets took out, he gets straight back up and he runs after the ball. <laughs> you know, he doesn't so roll I, around. You know, he I just wants to get... watching this. 
I hope he's hey. going to change his approach Saturday. I hope Robbins isn't watching this. He's going to change his approach on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robbins won't change his approach. He 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 doesn't. As as you said earlier, he doesn't he doesn't play that way. And we've we've done that since League Two. We've got ourselves out of League Two, League One playing this way, and we'll get ourselves out of the Championship playing this way. Yeah. I've got a couple more comments here about um, from a commentary point of view. Um, Luke Robinson be really happy with the draw. Burnley are playing the best, Burnley are the best playing team we've had at, at, at CBS Arena. Every other team I've seen, we have a beat or had a bad day. Um, we have a comment. Uh, Russ Watkin, evening, Russ. Uh, be brave is what he's saying about what we need to be. No one gives us much hope. However, we burst bubbles. Well, hopefully that will that will that be a Burnley will be bursting on uh, Saturday. You never know. No, you can do that at Carroll Road, that's fine. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for your will. Uh, was actually at our place when we played next. Uh, the official Flamey sports team we just need to believe in ourselves and back ourselves and, sh- and don't show any fear on Saturday. Uh, we've been to some tough places already this season once. No reason why we can't go to Turf more to do that. I've been to Lifts. Well, yeah, we did we even at Watford, and again, that's another game I thought we'd lose. Uh, Glenn, on our day, we're a match for anyone in this league. Just needs to remember that. That's spot on. I agree with that. Um, let's go to the next question. So let's go predictions this game. Uh, we're going, Mark, what's your prediction for this game? Um, I mean, I'm going to be happy with a win. But uh, because my brother's going, I'm going to have to say a 2 0 win for Burnley. 2 0. Dan? I'm unfortunately at a wedding. Um, Not good enough. No. no, I know. Nah, nah, to be well. fair, my mate had to move it. My mate moved his date. From like a Friday because he knew he was going to the away day the day after, and then decided, oh no, the missus has changed it because she wants it to be on their anniversary. So I've I've already set everything up on my phone. If he thinks I am going to be sat there listening to vowels, if he is Burnley Coventry playing in the background while they're saying, is there any reason here why these two should not be married? <laughs> then he's in for he's he's in for a treat. Um, you should say yeah because I've got to be there now. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold out for forty-five, will you? Um, I'm I'm going to say it's going to be a tough one. I'll, I'll go with another one-nil, another one-nil. But obviously, since we're at home and I'm beating at home, I'd have to back my own club. Yeah, Lee. I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm concerned this weekend, partly because I'm driving five hundred miles to go and watch it. <laughs> And it's, and it's 10 hours in the car. And last time I did this, it was the last game of the last season. I drove home on my own after being relegated. Um, I I think we need an early goal. I think that's what we need, early goal. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go positive. I'm going to say 3-1. Three, one. Three, one. You sound like one of the Proclaimers about 500 miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's, it feels like it, trust me. We'll, we'll to give you an myself. idea, Mark, um, to get for me to hook my brother and then go up to Turf Moor, because I'm in Colchester, works out for every nine minutes of, uh, of travelling, you get one minute of football. So it gives yeah. you an idea of how, how wow. much it's uh, worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo- I love wow. it. How many games do you go to a turf or not? I haven't been for, for a good two years. Um, we've yeah, we've played got Blame, for a game. for that. <laughs> yeah. oh, two, kids, two kids under six as well. It's a bit difficult to do that. Well, but, uh, well. yeah. you know, try to get to, uh, like I said, try to get the Sunderland game. Uh, Norwich game's a bit up in the air at the minute, but um, yeah. we've been able to watch them on TV. That's the one benefit of being in the Championship. I've watched more games on TV and found uh, more uh, legal streams than uh, than I normally do. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. all been fun. You shouldn't have to do that because you're on Sky more than everyone else. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but, you know, when, we, when we're in the Prem, we were very rarely on Sky because we just we're still big down as Burnley, but technically to everybody else, we are Burn Leeds. Just because we're on Sky all the time. Yeah. We've been on once. We've been on once. Yeah, it's, it's that curse of being that sort of uh, in the middle of the table in the, at this time of the season. You don't seem to get all the top draws. You know, you look at no. our fixtures and they're all being moved. I mean, I like say, I've go got to season, my season moves. tickets over there, but it's next to TV. What a waste of money. <laughs> that, last time we we're on, last time we we're on Sky was the thirty first of July last year. Was it really? Yeah. Awful. We've been on the red. I think, no, I wonder the year, all, no wonder you've all got more money than us. Well, no, the year <laughs> we we finished seventh in the Premier League, um, we were only on t- we were only on Sky like seven times. But this was a club that was doing it out of nowhere. And I, I watched the Premier League years the the other week, 
uh, for that year. And literally, there was one goal shown from Burnley. So it just shows you you get you get phased in that middle, don't you? But TV talks, doesn't it? And and uh, you know, rights selling to the rest of the world and things like that is important. And unfortunately, sometimes you're just not the favourable club. Yeah, yeah. Sky just hates us. <laughs> A bit like Jocker is, Mark. He already plays in Sky Blue, but uh, he bleeds claret. So, yeah. Uh, I've already got elements there to this uh, signing already. Damn your band. Yeah, see you tomorrow, Miles. I'd like to go and start this podcast, but I'm not sure now. I don't know it's shocking. There has been a bit of that sort of rivalry, hasn't there? Because of the O'Hare thing, it almost became a little bit of a little back and back and forth. Um, which is quite an interesting one, isn't it? It's how protective you get your players um, and, you know, how much money and things like that. So, like you say, it's a shame O'Hare's not playing tomorrow so we can't kick him up in the air on Saturday. The thing is with O'Hare, he knew January was coming up so he thought he'd better get injured again so you lot couldn't come in and buy him because he don't want to come up there. <laughs> that, the air is windy as well. <laughs> yeah, we don't like people up here wearing snoods. No chance. <laughs> Shorts well, weather, I can tell. I mean, I mean, one of the credits to, to company is that he's he's taken players from from abroad, which obviously is very different to what we had under Dyche and, and under Garlic, um, and uh, he's bedded them in really well. And there's there's certainly that attraction, isn't there, of, of of company and and he's linked to Man City. So, although we say you know everyone says he's a bit grim up north and all of that, actually we've done all right. And uh, the lads who could have been a potential risk. Uh, have done well, and I, I wonder whether someone like Scott Twine was was bought as a potential fullback if these lads didn't didn't come off. But, but then we've not seen the best of them yet with game time. Similar with Darko Churlinov, he's not had really much game time. So I think once you give these players a spell in the team, maybe we'll see a bit more out of them. But like you said, there the foreign market—that's just one of the weirdest things. Seeing Burnley delve into that, I mean, the last apart from. Stephen Defoe, the last one be- before that were what? Yellow Vossen? I think he, yeah. he, held, he held a shirt up for a picture and then went, see you later, I'm off back home. <laughs> and then held another shirt up. He, he, he weren't there long. What? Not even a week, were it? Something stupid like no, that. No, no, no. Um, but then, you know, we've had Diego Penny, Remco van der Schaff, who only saw the opening day against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, we got well, hammered he, didn't, at he was never going to play then, again, was he? Never. <laughs> never again. So right. it's not always pulled off for Burnley historically, no. and actually it is now. So, um, you know, fair dues to company and, and what they're doing, and also to pace in terms of what we're looking at. So, um, yeah, let's see how they get on. They'll all be terrible now on Saturday now. They'll probably be nil-nil. They'll be the one in snoods and long sleeve T-shirts. I'll be there in the snoods and long sleeve T-shirts. <laughs> Long ball in the air, bounces once, and then someone nods it in over the goalkeeper or something like that. But we'll see. <laughs> right, Miles, tell us how, how are we going to beat Burnley on Saturday? What's your prediction? So I, I think we're going to set up the way we played Watford, and um, we're going to absorb some pressure down the down the wings, and um, we're go, we're going to we're going to catch them on the break, um, and the lads are just going to work their socks off because. They've got something to prove to the new owner and uh, also something to prove for, to Mark Robbins as well that the, um, the starting 11 that he's going to play Saturday is the normal starting 11 who deserve to be out there and that can have a go at goal because um, I'm not mentioning any... Stri- uh, I'll just say... Stri- I'm not mentioning a striker's name. <laughs> you can imagine who I'm talking about. But um, I just think... I think they're just going to be firing on all cylinders because of everything that's gone on this week. If the fans are buzzing, the players must be buzzing and they really must be up for it because um, it, it's just, it's, a, it's amazing news for us. We, have, we haven't had any good news like this for t- over 21 years when we got relegated from the Premier League um, and I don't think we've ever had money like this to spend as well. So um, it, it's the start of a new, new era for us. It's just going to be, I think this is, this is your turning point of the season. Do you um, guys think you could do a, a a forest? You know, forest at this point were what still bottom of the league, and then decide and managed to make a bit of a storm. I mean, do you reckon you guys could do it with what's changed at the moment? I, I think I think if we get three more players in, 
like I said, we're, 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 we are 10 players short of you guys, really, in a way, apart from the two new signings this week. One's gone out, one's injured. So we're still at 21, really. I think if we get three more in, I think we're, we'll have a chance. Um, because don't forget, we're only four points off. Is it four yeah. points, I think? Um, with a, a, two games in hand again now because we're not playing Preston because they got through the FA Cup. So we're four points off. Two games in hand again, um, and I think it, I think everything is going on. Every, there's a buzz around the place at last, and it's been hard for us, you know. Just normal everyday things like the closure of the club shop and everything. We got excited because it was opened back up again a week before Christmas. How, why are we getting excited about a club shop reopening? You know what yeah. I mean? That's our life. No pitch. Uh, evicted from the ground and then after they come back from the World Cup you know from the World Cup break eviction notice played at Burton Albion this year it's just been one of them and I think we deserve a bit of luck and I think probably this is it this is it now we're going we're to get a little bit of luck if we get in the playoffs we get in the playoffs if we don't it don't matter if we finish one place above where we finished last year it's progression isn't it yeah. so you know but I said earlier on, um, the lad earlier on said you were going to win 3-2. I went the other way. I'm going to say 3-2 to us, just for the crack. You never know. You know, it's just one of them. And it, it could. It, I just think there's something. there's a buzz in the air around the club. Around our football club, there's a buzz in the air. It really is. It's a wasp is. nest. Sorry? It's a wasp nest. Oh, seriously, there really is. It's, it's just unbelievable. I've never known it like this for years. I, I haven't known it like this. It's it's fantastic. The fans on social media everywhere. They're just everyone is just just ah oh, so over the moon. They're so happy, you know. It's it's like the only thing now we just need to buy the ground off Ashley. That's all we need, and then we'll we'll have all the jigsaw pieces to be fit, fitted in together. So we we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going three two Sky Blues. I might even have a sneaky pound on it. Yeah. Well, never know. What a wasted no pound. You better off buying a lottery ticket, mate. I, I was gonna I was gonna stick some it up pound. then, I thought better not, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I think at the start at the start of the week I was like it's gonna be four or five nil Burnley. But I think I think we can acquit I think we can perform well there. I still think Burnley will probably win, but it might be a two one. But I think for me it's about performance. If we can I think the news off the field will, will give the lads a massive, um, a massive lift. Um, but I still feel Burnley will be too strong for us. And I think if we had, say, Carmel Fradzi in our back three, I, I feel we could get we could get something. I just feel defensively it's going to be our weaker area, and I feel Burnley will exploit that for this game. So I'll probably go three-one Burnley. But you never know. Miles Mar- could be right. We could win. So you never know. He won't be right. You know, I don't get oh, I'll tell you what. Do you know what now? I can't wait now because if it turn, if it comes off this, I'm messaging all of you. Yeah. <laughs> and you and your five hour drive home as well. Brilliant. <laughs> well, you never know. You know, you just you just don't know. We just got to give it. You just got to give our best shot. That's all we can do. And you know, to be fair, we went to Watford and no no one gave us a gave us a, gave us a prayer at Watford and we got we got the one nil win. Um, so you just, you know, strange things happen in football, um, and, and hopefully the two new signings and that, and the lift off the field, it gives us, it gives us, a, you know, you know, something to be optimistic about, and let's let's hope that's the case. I just don't, I just feel Burnley will be buoyed by, by a, you know a very impressive win at, at, at Bournemouth for the cup. Um, they are the team to beat, um, but you know, strange things happen. I, I, I hope it's going to be us, but I just don't see it happening. But you never know. I'm not, I'm not the most positive commentary fan, as everyone knows, if you're watching our shows. So I'm hoping that I'll have, um, I'll be eating some humble pie again. So, Are you the Carl Pilkington of Sky Blues fans TV? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> lads, honest, right? Every single episode it is literally either on the fence or <laughs> serious winning. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine playing cricket with Mark? You have to spend all Saturday with him telling you you're not going to win, even if you only need one run <laughs> to win the cricket. He's always missed the negative. And do you know what? I've, I've told him he can sit next to us at West Brom. I'm, I'm, I'm regretting that. I'm offering it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, maybe that positivity come rub, rub off on me when we met next to me at West Brom. I'll tell you that much. But, 
Do you know? Do you know what it is, Daniel? See, every time I go for a cough win, we don't win. So that's why I always go the, the other Ooh, side. Oh, why not? So that's, that's, why not? That's my secret tactic. So you know. So I'm not He'll secretly negative. put a pound on three two now. <laughs> you you, you, you listening to you tonight, Miles, is giving me that 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 cause of optimism. So I think why not? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean the miles that are talking now, or the miles that was like uh, 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 well, earlier yeah. on? <laughs> you, know, hey, you, you wouldn't believe how old my laptop is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to wind it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, His laptop's still showing commentary in the Premier League. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Mark went there. He went it's there. It is. <laughs> Well, on that on that bombshell, I think we'll wrap up tonight's show. So uh, I want to thank our guests, uh, Mark uh, Cologne, Lee Cologne, uh, Dan from Turf Morehouse TV. Great having you guys on. Um, Miles, as always, really enjoyed list- really enjoyed having you on, and really uh, enjoy listening to your views. Uh, to counterbalance my my negative views, it's always a pleasure. Um, so our next Cheers. show will be Sunday. Um, hopefully, we'll be talking about a great win at Burnley. So fingers crossed for that. Um, and we've got a Norwich preview pod on Thursday of next week. We'll be joined by Samuel Seaman, uh, who's a local journalist in Norwich. So we're talking Norwich on Thursday night. Um, I want to say thanks, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, thanks for all your comments on the show. It's much appreciated. Um, going to round off tonight's show with um, hold on, and Matt, with all our sponsors. Yep, yeah. Matt, yeah. live outside Turf Moor on Saturday. Yes. Don't forget, and inside. Two thirty, is it? Uh, it will. It will be quarter past two live. I wish I were there now, Miles. Wish I were there. Yeah, yeah live, live from Turf Moor, outside and inside the ground. Don't forget to tune in, guys. If Are you, you can't make it, going to Coral to collect your winnings. Yeah, that's it. Afterwards, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So why yeah. while you're in the church at the wedding, tune into the live stream at Turf Moor. You'll be all right. Oh, I will do. I will do. <laughs> So, yeah, 2.15, live on YouTube and on our social media channels, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and uh, good night, and uh, speak to you soon. And uh, here's our adverts with all our sponsors, who are fantastic. Thank you.